Hey, what's up guys? This is McLean Harvey, the managing partner for Glambot. And today I want to walk you through some of the new features of our latest motion control software update, version 3.2.x. The first thing you'll probably notice is the user interface has a fresh new look. One thing we loved about our old version was how easy it was for operators and directors to use. We wanted to maintain that with the new version, but also increase functionality. One way we did this was by separating paths by movement type. Paths are now organized into three movement types, sweeps, pushes, and pulls. This allows operators and directors to immediately go to the movement type that they would like and select their path. The next thing you'll probably notice is there are more path options. Our team has diligently been working on six new paths that will help create some stunning cinematic moments. Those paths are push to pan, pan to pull, pan sweep left, Pan sweep right, floating push, and a pull to flow. Another feature we think you're going to love is called path tethering. This allows operators and directors the ability to take any path and link it to another path. This can be done as many times as the operator or director wants, creating hundreds of different path options. For instance, a reveal pull to a high push to a middle pull to a middle push to a sweep pull. Any path can be linked that starts where the previous path stopped. For instance, a reveal pull to a high push. Operators and directors will only have blended options to ensure for a more seamless cinematic moment. As you can see, when you select a path, tethered paths will not be grayed out. This helps operators and directors by taking the guesswork out of which paths can be tethered together. To help enhance operator and director ease of use, we've also added a path selection button. This allows operators and directors to either retain their path selection or clear it after filming is done. Our last feature in this update will enhance filming reliability in the dynamic live event environment. Our connection type button will now allow operators and directors the ability to choose between a Bluetooth or a USB connection. This allows operators and directors the option and ability to easily switch between what connection type they'd like for their camera. Now I'd like to talk about some of the uniqueness of the Glambot workflow. We felt that it was important to give our operators and directors as many options at their fingertips as possible while maintaining an intuitive workflow that's concise and efficient. 
This allows operators and directors to remain flexible in a dynamic environment like live events. Now I'd like to walk you through exactly what that workflow looks like. As you can see, today we have two devices set up. It is possible to run off of a split screen of one device. However, for live sharing purposes, we do recommend that you use two devices. For our motion control software, I'm using an iPad, but you can use any device that has a web browser. For SnapPick, I am using an iPhone, but again, you can use any device compatible with SnapPick. The first thing the operator is gonna do is select what path or paths they would like to run. I'll go ahead and select a high push. Now I'd like to tether some paths together. So I'm going to tether a pull to float and a three quarter sweep right. My total movement time on send it speed is gonna be 8.14 seconds. We do recommend send it for the smoothest robotic movement. You can see the time in the top right corner of the motion control software. Now I go into my snap pick templates and if you're using our Glambot templates, you'll notice that they have timestamps on them. So 8.14 seconds of robotic movement. I want a paparazzi effect and I'll go ahead and select the eight seconds of recording because it is the closest to my robotic movement type. Now I click next and once on the snap pick tap to start screen, I can press start on the motion control software. The robot will now get to the start position and you'll see a countdown on the operator screen. That's great. So now you can see the video has finished recording and is being added. And once it's added and rendered, the guests would be able to share their video. There are a couple features that we added to make operation even simpler. If you really like the path combination that you just ran, you can put the path selection on repeat and now you don't have to reselect. All you have to do is press start again. Likewise, on the snap pick side, if you're only wanting to run one path or path combination, you can delete all the other templates out of your snap pick event profile. This means less clicks and a more streamlined workflow. On the flip side, if you want fresh paths for every session, you can toggle path selection to clear and it will clear the path selection after every session, allowing operators and directors more flexibility in each session. Now I'd like to show you what it looks like if you only want to run one path or path sequence and one snap pick video template for your entire event. I've gone ahead and deleted all other video templates out of snap picks event profile. And as you can see, snap pick now goes directly to the tap to start screen. Now all the operator has to do is select the camera wake button and start on the motion control software. The robot will get to the start position, countdown on the screen, and recording will start when the robot moves as normal. Great, now the motion and recording has stopped. SnapPick is adding the video and will render it. Now that we're on the sharing screen, all the operator has to do is either help the guest share their video or click skip to go right into the next session. Now they can just press start on the motion control and run the exact same thing over again. We hope that you've enjoyed this walkthrough of our latest software update 3.2.x as well as the uniqueness of the Glambot workflow. For any additional information or support, please visit us online at getglambot.com.